Well, some breaking news with this announcement. Uh, you will be purchasing 60 of the A321 NEO aircraft. And of course, those are manufactured by Airbus. This is coming as a bit of a surprise because many people had assumed that you were going to go after the Boeing 737 Dreamliners. What happened? This is Riyadh Air. And uh, <laughs> we're absolutely delighted that here at FII today, we've just announced 60 A321 NEO family aircraft and uh, we'll be taking delivery in the second half of 2026 and that takes our committed orders to date up to 132 aircraft so special day for us but it was a doubly special day mm -hmm. because we've also announced our version 1.0 of our digital app and this is the first for commercial aviation yeah. it's got more in common with uber Amazon, Noon.com, so we're super excited. We've had a great day. Yeah, big announcements on your side, but also probably not a great day for Boeing. This comes as a bit of a, a snub to them. How did management react to your decision to go with the Airbus narrow jets? Well, I think most airlines like to have a balance between both of the big manufacturers. We've already placed an order for 72 787 Dreamliners. So for us, the right aircraft in the narrow body space was the A321neo. It's an incredible aircraft from an environmental performance, from an overall cost efficiency standpoint, but for us, most importantly, guest experience. So, special moment in our time. Can I just ask you, though, whether some of the factors that have been uh, pulling back at Boeing over the last couple of months were factored into your decision-making, talking about the strikes and several incidents that have happened, is that a factor to your decision not to buy the Boeing jets today? So it's not been a factor. This is a commercial campaign. It's obviously around availability. It's about pricing. But most importantly, it's about performance. And for us, the performance of the 321 Neo family is exceptional because there is a regular 321, there is a long-range variant, and there's an extra long-range variant. So that gives us the flexibility in terms of how we configure to the missions that we want to operate. Could and I think most modern airlines are of the view that this is an exceptional platform. Yeah. Could there be more narrow-body jets ordered from Boeing in the future, or is this it for now? So we're going to move on to a third campaign. Mm -hmm. So obviously the narrow body order that we've announced today we're absolutely delighted by, but we're very soon going to move on to an extra wide body campaign. So more to look forward to from a Riyadh Air uh, standpoint as we build up to go in live next year. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and indeed, are you concerned about the deliveries of some of these jets? Uh, because you also have the wide body jets and they're set to be uh, delivered. Are you concerned about some of the delays with those deliveries? So the aviation uh, manufacturing sector, everybody sees the challenges that are there at the moment within the supply chain. And, you know, we're very focused working with both Boeing and now obviously Airbus. And they understand that we're a startup. Um, we don't have a plan B. We're not like a legacy airline where existing leases we could extend or we can play around with the network, with network which, of course, neither exist. So both of these manufacturers we're working very close with. Yeah. Can I just ask you one, one last question uh, about Boeing? Because they, they have been set by, by so many challenges. What do you think is needed to, to right the ship there? So, look, I think Boeing is an incredible organization, over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. The world needs a strong Boeing. The USA needs a strong Boeing. Mm -hmm. The traveling public needs a strong Boeing. And, of course, so does commercial aviation. They will come good. They're having a real, real tough time at the moment. They'll go back to basics, become engineering-led, and they'll get strong again. Mm. So let's talk about the actual launch of the airline. You hinted at some point next year. Can you give us a little bit more color as to when exactly it's going to be operational? So I'm hoping when you and I are sat maybe here at FII next year... Well, hopefully we'll speak before then. <laughs> you've been sitting in seat 1A on the way here. So we're super excited. Okay, so we Q4. Want to get I'm going to say Q4 next year. Into next year. And yeah. then how do you see it working out with Saudi Airline? You've got, obviously, Riyadh Air, which is a new entrant uh, to the, the Saudi airline market. How do you see the, the coordination with Saudi airline, which already exists? So we work very, very closely with Saudi. Obviously, we'll have two international carriers of the kingdom. 
and over time as we scale up Saudi will transition to hub out of Jeddah which has always been their hub um, and obviously that's conditional upon us getting a fleet that gives us connectivity to the moment we're underserved to so you can't fly directly today from Riyadh to Tokyo to Shanghai to Sydney to Seoul mm -hmm. and that's totally unacceptable the markets there the demands there as soon as we get these deliveries, we'll make sure we put an incredible product on to the traveling public. Mm. And just final question for you on uh, how, how easy or how challenging has it been to attract uh, the right talent and the right personnel for the launch when it eventually happens? So we've had a very pleasant surprise on our website, riada.com. There is a careers page. It allows pilots, cabin crew, engineers, all manner of different skills to apply. Up to now, in 18 months, we've had 1.4 million applicants, 143 different nationalities, and of course, the question is why. And but how the only do you answer that? The only way I can actually answer my question why is because the brand is Riyadh. It's a startup, and what it stands for is energetic, it's vibrant, and it's digital.